This is the fifth in a series of videos of how to use Model Builder to automate geoprocessing tasks. In this example, we've constructed a model that will allow us to take Boston 311 data and map it out and then aggregate it by neighborhood and finally to allow us to calculate the um, report, the number of reports uh, per person within each neighborhood, the number, the number of reports per square mile within each neighborhood, and lastly the percentage of reports that were in overdue status per neighborhood. The last piece that we're going to do here is we want to be able to consistently symbolize the data and in effect allow the model to output um, properly symbolized layers that we can then look at in ArcMap. In order to do that though we actually have to create the layer files with the symbology that we want ahead of time and these are used as a template um, that will then that the model can use. So the first thing we want to do is work with that last output that contains the data and create a series of uh, layer files. So I'm going to symbolize this same layer and create and save three different layer files. So we'll do one with the reports per person and I'm going to use a quantile classification in this case. The labeling is a little messy here so I'm going to format the labels to be a little less um, long to make them simpler to read. So I'm going to save this as a layer file. Excuse me. And I'm going to make sure that I'm working within the um, file that I'm going to be accessing. So I'm going to call this reports per person. That I'm going to re-symbolize it with reports per square mile. Again, in quantiles. Again, I'm going to format the labeling so it's a little less messy. There we go. Save as a layer file again. And lastly, the percent overdue again in quantiles. Format the numbers. Much better. Okay, so I've saved the three layer files that I'm going to be using in the model. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this. So I'm going to, now I'm going to ready to start adding the tools that allows me to symbolize this. So I'm going to zoom into that area over here where I'm going to work. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, um, a feature class first, or rather a feature layer, excuse me. Uh, in order to symbolize it. So the way it works in Model Builder is that you you actually need to, if you're going to create a symbolized output, it can only work from a feature layer rather than a feature class. So it's likely that the final output here is a feature class, so we're going to need to create a feature layer first. And we want to have three separate maps, one for each of those measures that we set up. So we'll need to create three separate feature layers to do that. So I'm going to access our toolbox and bring in the tools that I need. In this case, um, what I need to do is go under data management tools and um, uh, uh, layers and table views and I'm going to use the make feature layer option and I know I'm going to be creating um, three separate layers. So I'm going to go ahead and drag in um, three separate layers, uh, feature layer tools, excuse me. And then from those, I know that I'm also going to be um, then using a second tool called Apply Symbology from Layer, which will then take those feature layers and apply the symbology from those layer files that I created just a second ago. Okay, so the way this works is that I'm going to 
connect that last output as the input feature to each of these tools. Check the parameters. So in this case too, I need to make sure that the output is coming from the geodatabase. Okay. Now, uh, the other thing I know to do too, too is I forgot this right now. The output layer should be a unique name for each of these items here. So that's important so that you don't end up overriding your um, um, your items as it creates output to them. So now we'll create these are going to be the input layer to each of these items. And finally, we specify the layer file that will apply the symbolization that we want. So we'll go through each one in turn. And navigate to each of them so that each of them will be symbolized properly. So let me clean this up again so that this is not so so messy. Okay, so let's zoom out a bit so we can see the full extent of that. Okay, so what we want then is that each of these symbolized layers to appear within our map. So I'm going to right click on that last output. I'm going to choose add display, which I normally do whenever I want to look at some output that's been run. But here you're specifying the last item is going to actually, that that's what will happen to it, that it'll be run um, and it'll be applied um, uh, automatically into the table of contents and into your map. All right, so in order to watch this, how this particular model works, we're gonna, I'm going to um, minimize the screen just a bit here so we can watch it as it works. So we're going to run the model, and it'll because we've already run it up to this point, we can see by the shadowing it's only going to run from this point forward. So let's see what it does. All right. So now we can see that each of the models, each of the maps, excuse me, has been added there. We see one for the reports per square mile, reports per person, and percent overdue. And we've essentially uh, run our model, and we can see then uh, what it looks like. And every time we run the model, it'll cons consistently produce the same symbolized output. The nice thing is, as we move forward, we'll actually be able to use the same symbolization uh, repeatedly, even when we change the or originating data. So right now, the way the model works, we can run it every time we open it up um, and hit the Run button. Um, in the next video, we're going to look at how we can turn this model into a proper tool that can be run from our catalog or directly from the toolbox.